Before we start, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jeremy Cook. I'm one of the trainers here at Cloud Academy, specializing in DevOps. Polymorphism is one of the most powerful concepts of object-oriented programming. The key to polymorphism is deciding at runtime exactly what kind of object we are working with. Polymorphism comes from the Greek, poly meaning many, morphism meaning forms, many forms. It allows code to be written that is self-modifying, so that when new classes are added to an inheritance hierarchy to augment the functionality of the program, no changes need to be made to the existing code. It depends on the principle of substitutability, where a superclass object can hold a reference to itself or any of its subclasses. The following subclassing example has implementations for circle, square, and line. Notice that we have defined special versions of the draw method for each of our specialized shapes. The method has the same signature as that in the superclass. This is a key requirement for making polymorphism work. Each subclass overrides the parent's draw method. We now store our specialized objects in the generalized container and call their draw methods. Notice that inside the for loop, we have no idea what kind of shape we are drawing. This is polymorphism in action. The process of abstraction is key to good object-oriented programming practice. Java facilitates this by allowing the specialized class to be referenced as its superclass. This allows us to treat things in a more generalized way and greatly simplifies code. One of the nice things about Java is the ability to use subclasses in the place of superclasses. What this means is that you can assign a subclass object to a superclass object reference. Additionally, the subclass does not need to be the immediate child of the superclass. The subclass could extend an object which extends the superclass. Assigning the subclass to an object reference of a grandparent is still valid. The reason that this is valid is that the grandchild object subclass will still contain all of the characteristics of the grandparent superclass. Casting to a derived class. There are times, however, that we may need to find out if a generalized reference is really a specialized instance. Consider the following scenario. We instantiate a new circle object, but it is typed as its superclass type, in this case shape. Then, we are unable to access the methods of the circle subclass. The getRadius method doesn't exist for the type shape. Therefore, we must downcast to the subclass type. Circle is a subclass of shape. The compiler allows this. But, if shape were initialized as line, explicitly casting this would fail at runtime. The instance of operator allows us to test what kind of instance we have. Once we have confirmed the fact that we have a specialized instance, we can then cast the general reference to the actual subtype we have and access the specialized methods of the instance. The Java language includes the keyword instance of to help us to determine what the exact class of a subclass is. An example is shown here. However, it is better where possible to have code explicitly designed to handle a particular type of object rather than branching within a class based on the type. Testing the object type and then processing based on the type is considered procedural code, whereas having a dedicated object to handle the object is more object-oriented. Let's now consider upcasting versus downcasting. Upcasting is runtime safe, checked by the compiler, can be used to fill an array of related types, and is often done to satisfy method signature requirements. Downcasting, on the other hand, can only partially be checked by the compiler is often used to expose additional subclass methods, and can convert collection of generic types to more specialized forms. We can always upcast, because when we do so, we lose access to specialized behavior. We cannot, however, downcast without checking the type, because the specialized behavior may not exist. If we do a bad downcast, the error will be caught at runtime, not compile time. Calling superclass methods from a subclass. An overriding method in a subclass may wish to call the overridden method from the superclass. When a subclass overrides a method of its superclass, the superclass's method is hidden. 
This causes a problem if we want to use the superclasses method instead of the subclass. To access the superclasses method, we can use the super keyword. The syntax is super.methodName. The final keyword. Sometimes we may wish to ensure that a class or one of its methods are not subclassed or overridden. If a method performs a vital function, such as authentication, it would be very trivial for someone to override this method and implement a non-secure method in its place, either intentionally or unintentionally. We can stop this by placing the final keyword before the return type of the method. Variables declared within the scope of a method can also be declared as final. Once these variables have been given a value, the value cannot be changed. Method parameters can also be defined as final. By doing so, it becomes impossible to assign a different value or reference to the parameter. Note, while final fields cannot be changed, remember that object references are just references, not a copy of the object. We really do hope you will enjoy and learn from this content.